band's going to do uh, two or three songs. There's going to be then an opportunity to, for questions and answers. We encourage you to please ask lots of questions. And um, then there's going to be uh, pizza arriving at about 11.15. We're going to have a very short lunch break because we want to focus more on getting back with the instructors. So after the lunch break, we're going to have separate rooms. We've got drums will be uh, on the stage. We're going to figure out where the other musicians are, are, are going to be going. So you choose whatever instrument you want to go with. You go with them, and that's an opportunity for you to uh, ask more detailed questions about the instrument and performing. And, uh, and yeah, and, that's, and then at about uh, five minutes to one, we, we, uh, we finish up, and it uh, looks like we're getting some more And um, so that'll, that'll be it. So enjoy, have a great time. You guys can go grab a seat uh, in the theater. Thank you. We want to give a welcome to, uh, to everybody that's here. We're thrilled to see such a, a large team of the which is great. Uh, before we continue, I'd like to thank our sponsors, because quite a few people are sponsoring. 89 BC musicians are involved in all of this, uh, the board of the Jazz Society. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you all here. Um, I uh, would like to start by acknowledging that we are on the traditional unceded territory of the Snoonable people. And Vancouver Island University very much appreciates the relationship that we have with both the Snoonable and the other coastal peoples that uh, come and uh, allow us to be on their land. I, uh, I understand there's a number of high schools here, so um, I think we've got uh, Lee Smith Secondary. And, uh, if they were first, I'm sure everyone else is gonna be louder than that. Dover Bay? Woo! Yeah! <laughs> that was us. Woo! a small group, big voice. Uh, 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 since Charles left the planet in 1979. He was a virtuoso bass player, pianist, band leader, and composer. He was also an author and forms his own recording and publishing companies. He recorded over 100 live albums and wrote over 300 compositions, leaving the second largest legacy in American music after Duke Ellington. The entire catalog of his works were acquired by the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., a first for an African American and a first for jazz. He was honored with a postage stamp, presumably in the U.S. His epic masterwork, Epitaph, which Mangus said he wrote for his tombstone, premiered after his death in New York City in 1989. It has more than 4,000 measures and took over two hours to perform, and was produced by Sue Mingus with the Pulitzer Prize winner Gunther Schuller and Nanaimo's own Andrew Holmesy. <laughs> the Mingus Dynasty was the first legacy ensemble formed by Sue. These Grammy award-winning musicians perform all over the world, transforming a musical legacy into a modern creative force. They are each esteemed artists, composers, and band leaders at the top of their field, as well as in-demand sidemen on the international jazz scene. So let's meet them. Wayne Escoffery. is an expressive and original soloist and winner of the Downbeat Critics Poll. He is a professor at Yale School of Music and alumnus of the Thelonious Monk Institute. Outside of the Mingus Dynasty, he's associated with Tom Harrell and the Black Arts Jazz Collective. Tatum Greenblatt. is a versatile and creative musician named by Wynton Marsalis as an up-and-coming player. He is also a regular with jazz at the Lincoln Center and has performed with Richard Bona, Blood, Sweat and Tears, and the Maria Schneider Orchestra. Donald Edwards. drummer at the back, is a foundational driving force in modern jazz. He has worked with Freddie Hubbard, Mark Whitfield, Branford Marsalis, and Dave Holland, among many others. <laughs> David Kukowski. Yes. 
is a dynamic and seasoned performer. His impressive resume includes appearances with Roy Haynes, Randy Brecker, Jeff Tane Watts, and Christian McBride. Andy McKee. has a storied career and hard-swinging approach. A professor at the New School of Jazz, he has shared the stage with legends such as Hank Mobley, Sly Hampton, Philly Joe Jones, Chet Baker, and Elvin Jones. Thank you for being here as we welcome the Mingus Dynasty Quintet, and as Charles once said, let my children hear music. Have a great morning and enjoy. songs in the real book, and uh, Goodbye Pork Pie Hat, I, always, I was just reading through that. And I was like that, I like the melody of the chords. Um, later on, I was, uh, when I started working, uh, I was playing with Randy Brecker and his group, and uh, I, I knew that he played with Mingus, so I listened to some of the records he did with Mingus, and then, it turned out a lot of, you know, then I heard about uh, this group, um, the, the Mingus Dynasty and the Mingus Big Band. It's basically, I had to make sure I could play in E major for a three and a half minute solo on just E major. Right? You want the gig? <laughs> um, so, you know, like, and, and that, but that's the beautiful thing about this, is you're always going to be presented with, with opportunities to learn something. And all of those experiences are going to make you grow. You know, I learned a lot by having to simplify my playing for that gig. You know, it was just a completely different experience. And, and so, um, you know, it's all good and it all informs you and it all adds to you know, who you are. And you know, you know. So, you, with that sort of perspective, jazz and center are not a very close to play. They're both very <coughs> esoteric instrumental music, you know, uh, in, a, in a jazz orchestra format. So, um, but they're, you know, they're both amazing learning experiences that came my ass. That's <laughs> beyond. Um. Well, actually, it, it, it entirely depends on, on uh, you know, it varies year to year. Um, but certainly, uh, my advice would be apply to the schools you want to go to. You never know. Uh, you, know you apply to a few the schools you really want to go to. And um, hopefully, one comes up with a the money you need to go there. But you just never know, it changes year to year, so. But you, you, gotta, you gotta put yourself out there and apply for it to find out. I mean, when, when I was, uh, is that my mom that's making it cool? When I was, uh, I think probably when I was in middle school, before I really got serious about the saxophone, um, you know, I, I didn't go to my mom, I just some of my mother. Uh, you know, she never, so, uh, but she told me, you know, you need to go to college. She's like, you're going to college, it's not, it's not a question about it. Um, but I'm not paying for it. It's not money. So you need to figure out how to get to college. So she said, whatever you do, you need to do it to the best of your abilities so that you can get to college. So you might have a lot to do. Um, so I decided from when I was pretty young that I was going to college for free. I just decided. Right? And then I came across the saxophone and then I practiced my ass off. That's how you get into their school for free. Practice as much as possible. 
and just decide that you're going to do it. Or wherever else is it. 